Greetings, as you know, oh, yes, Rock and Roll Spot can connect you with weekly comic book roundup. We're going to get things started with our War of the Realms coverage. So, first off, we got a couple of uh, holdouts from the last couple weeks. I'm going to start things off with War of the Realms, Journey into Mystery number three, from which was which came out two weeks ago, but I'm only just now getting it because people, because the shop I go to didn't expect. Uh, to sell as many, and, well, I lost out. So where we left off, our merry band of heroes, consisting of uh, Hawkeye, Kate Bishop, Spider-Man, uh, Miles Morales, Balder, uh, Thori, Thor's dog, Death Locket, and Wonder Man, I think that's everybody, Oh, and Sebastian uh, Druid had been basically went on a road trip and uh, it came upon a, a group of scrolls hiding out in an RV park. But uh, Lausa, who who our Barry Benefiers are defending, and is, who is also the sister of Thor, Angela, and Loki, and daughter. Daughter of Odin and Freya. Lausa calmed everyone down. So they're back on the road. We start off with Sebastian and Miles <laughs> making their own action figures and fighting with them. Turns out that uh, those are a bunch of uh, one. Wonder Man of uh, actually Wonder Man has of himself. Um, but, and he points out they cost nineteen cents to produce. He has a garage chock full of them. But don't touch the yellow and green vision. That's a collector's item. And so. It, it comes time for them to uh, pit stops are needed, so they run in. They pass by a sign, a sign for a closed park called Six Gun Territory. Death Locket it, it loves it. West, it, as she puts it, it's got the West World means definitely haunted, abandoned amusement park vibe, which is totally her jam. So everyone goes and, you know, does some exploring. Wonder Man and Death Locket discuss uh, Western movies. Miles and Thor go for a walk. Meanwhile, Ares is caught up with the, uh, has found the scrolls and, uh, yeah, it's not going, it doesn't go well for the scrolls. Um, but yeah, Death Locket is a huge fan of westerns from when, uh, she was living with, uh, Life Model Duplicate of, uh, Dub Dub Dugan. And so they have marathon binge sessions of old western movies, which were the ones he loved when he was, you know, alive. But she prefers the older ones. However, some of the old uh, Western heroes are sort of pop up. Started with Phantom Rider. Then, uh, Balder and, and Hawkeye have a chat about who, who's in charge, and mainly because Kate kind of feels like maybe she stepped on his toes a bit. However, Balder is going to have you say, hey, look, I, I, I did the leadership thing once. I sucked at it. I'm relieved to have you run the show. But there's someone watching. Meanwhile, in the saloon, uh, Druid is looking at the mirror when suddenly three uh, ghosts come out of it. 
fights ensue, and more fighting ensues, and uh, yeah. They're all there for the demon. What demon, though? And of course, since they're ghosts, most of them, since the Western heroes are all ghosts, the uh, most of them have most most of our heroes have no effect on them, except for Druid and Balder. Balder having led the forces of Hell at one point, and Druid being well, Druid. It turns out that uh, Lausa is part Surtur. Also, Deathlog is completely enamored of the Western heroes. So, we have a sort of holdover from, la from two weeks ago. So now, our holdover from last week. War of, War of the Realms, Drain the Mystery, number four. And yes, that does mean that next week is number five. I think. I'm pretty sure number five would be due to come out next week. So, first off, Druid explains what happened. It turns out that, uh, well, Thori explains what happens. What happened. <clears throat> and in fact, his words do it the best justice. When King Odin and Queen, Fre Queen Freya did this disgusting thing gods do to make baby gods, they did it in the realm between realms. The, the same place they had taken the life force of the fallen fire demon Surtur in order to remove, remove him from existence. But to no love in that place, with that presence lingering around them. Well, basically, Lausa has three parents. Odin, Freya, and Sir. And so she's also sister to Cinder. That's true. But... So everyone is afraid that they're initially afraid that all the Western heroes are going to kill her, Lausa. But no, 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 they're there to serve her. They're actually there to serve Lausa. So Kushala, um, a, a demon rider, sorcerer supreme in the mid 1800s kind of lays that one on but uh, everyone, all, all of them were just, you know hey we're we're totally down to fight this invading army you know it doesn't matter if it's in the 1800s or the 2000s we're still down and so they go on and so they go off to ride at the battle and Our merry heroes get back on the RV and, well, turns out they're almost out of food, almost out of gas, and almost out of diapers. But they're near Carson City. So they figure, you know, win a bunch of money in one of the, in one of the casinos. Of course, they just so happen to go into the same casino that it is hosting Henchfest. While the villains are away, the henches do play. And so, they have the honeymoon suite, but they, they do have a... They've, they're starting to concoct a plan. Basically, uh, turns out that uh, the machine, slot machines are networked. So, as Deathlog discovers, she can link up to the networks and whatnot. So... They're going to go to uh, the biggest payout slots, she'll plug in the system at a set time, and then jackpot. But Ares is en route, and he's getting uh, he's getting the lowdown from Cinder. From Cinder. And in fact, he, she has told him that uh, they're in the Sterling Hotel and Casino and in the honeymoon suite. And she, he also, she also suggests he uses a little bit of subtlety. And so Ares shows up later. 
having held a a, uh, um, a maid hostage, and Thori and Thori and Ares get into a fight. Meanwhile, on the floor, the plane's about to go off, but Hawkeye I guess recognized by some Hellfire goons, and so yeah. Fight ensues there while while there's a fight going on in the in the honeymoon suite. And Spider Man manages to knock someone's uh bucket full of chips <laughs> well basically knock it to the point where it falls and yeah, he made it rain. Ares then shows up with the baby, and yeah. Well, Ares leaves with the baby while the fight's going on on the, on the casino, and the ones, the uh, the ones organizing the hedge fest are just like, uh, uh. So, Wonder Man decides to surrender. And before he can, well, one, he gets shot at. Though, one of the henchmen does mention that, you know, any fight they survive is a good fight. So, you know, I, I can't blame him that. However, the maid comes down, explaining that there's a roided up wrestler fighting a giant dog in the honeymoon suite. Again. They get up there. And while yes, Thor is injured, they're not. It's not life threatening. But yeah, Ares now has Lausa, and is taking him to the point, the cinder. And that's where the issue ends. Moving on to Giant Man number three. Where we left off, our uh, size-changing heroes had were headed towards Emir's stronghold with the plan of finding him and killing him. As they climb the walls, which are doing so at normal at normal size because it would be less cons it would be honestly less conspicuous that way. They're all thinking various things. Um, Goliath is thinking about uh, how he couldn't climb like climb the way he's climbing when he was a kid. Raz is trying not to think about the fact that he wasn't he hasn't climbed like this since he was a kid. Scott Lang is of course thinking about his daughter, and Atlas is looking at the, the dead sea creatures encased in the icy ocean and hoping they're just sleeping. And what if sea turtles can even survive cold? That they've never, that, well, cold they've never felt before. So, Scott and Raz shrink down and are tossed up, and then, of course, the, the infiltration goes goes sideways, but. They still manage to get to where Emir is, and it turns out that Emir is being held prisoner by none other than Carlos Sofen, aka Moonstone, aka former teammate many times over of Atlas. But yeah, big fight ensues. Turns out they're, they're, the whole thing is they're making ice giants from the, the shards of, of Ymir. The shards, of course, grow back as soon as they're chipped off. Ice giants are actually the rel a relative of sorts, primordial. Er, they're what came before. They're the precursor. There we go. They're the precursors to frost giants. So. But it turns out that one of her uh, handmaids, or that her water bearer is none other than Cassie Lang. 
Scott Lang's daughter. So, yeah. Big fight. Reunions. Everyone's happy. And instead of killing Emir, who was the prisoner of Lofay to begin with, instead of killing Emir, they, they managed to convince Carla to, you know, free him. And he leaves, heading into the ocean, and getting bigger as he goes. And kind of messing up Lofay's plan. And that is where the series ends. So while, yes, Scott achieved his, his goal, rescuing his daughter, overall the mission was kind of a bust, as the plan was kill Surtur. Or kill Emir, I mean, that. Anyways, moving on to Venom number 15. Where we'd left off here, Venom with a, uh, a, a Norse, a Norn dream, uh, a Dark Elf Dreamstone. It is, is facing off with Jack Lantern, who also has a Dreamstone. So, it really, it's just them fighting, and, and it's, you know, he has to figure, and Eddie, Eddie Brock, trying to figure out what, you know, how to, how to, re how to get the upper hand. And so he realizes that instead of using the dreams, the dream armor, he, all for himself, he's going to send, he's going to take control of it and then send it out to everyone. And so he ends up with an army at hand. And so they take down... With his uh, Dreamstone Axe, he calls some lightning, and that manages to hit uh, Jack-O-Lantern, and causes him to drop the stone. And he comes upon him, and, well, Jack-O-Lantern explains he's not the real jack he, he just found the suit. And Eddie goes back to his son, who greets him with a gun in the face, but it's just, you know, him, Dylan being cautious, you know, someone's coming in, someone's going, coming in, hell's out there, so, oh, okay, it's just dad. But it looks like someone is going out is picking up one of the dream stones that was dropped. Anyway, there's a, there's a bit at the end here. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a preview of something else. Or you have some guys in hazmat suits uh, looking at the subway and there's something in there. But that whole that one page preview, I don't know, whatever interlude, whatever it was written was had a completely different art. Uh, art team and whatnot, so yeah, I'm not sure how that links to anything. Anyways, finally move on to As Guardians of the Galaxy number 10, which is sadly the final issue of the series. Sorry to break to you guys. Anywho, so where we left off, they were, yeah, the As Guardians were uh, involved in the War of the Realms. And, um, they had put Valkyrie, their former teammate Valkyrie, to rest. But they were determined to continue fighting. However, Annabelle Riggs and her and her girlfriend Ren were determined to keep fighting. So the bulk of the story takes place in uh, we we open open up in Kenya with various wars of Midgard and Asgard fighting off. Uh, the forces of heaven. You got Sif, Angela, Punisher, uh, Okoye, Dormelage, plus the Asgardians of the Galaxy. Who do a, who managed to do it quite a bit? But Throg gets uh, seemingly attacked by one of the angels. 
leading to her being relieved of her head by Executioner. After all, that frog is his friend. The rest of the uh, Asgardians implore Angela to summon the Nagelfar Armada, but she says it's not, it, it would be wrong to do so on Earth. And so she and, and Scourge teleport to heaven. And he said he never expected to see heaven before returning once more to hell. And so in heaven, she summons forth the Nagel for Armada. And the angel, the majority of the angels then return to heaven. And the queen of the angels has a knock down drag out with, with Angela herself. Which Angela, Angela wins. And then she uh, breaks the, uh, the horn and tells the angel heaven is defeated. Their queen has fallen with her last breath, she begged that Angela would offer the, the angel's guidance. But Angela thinks that she might have wanted her, wanted Angela to take the queen's place. But a queen must love her people, and that is something Angela can never do. They, at least for the angels. They abandoned her to the cosmos long ago. Left her to fend for herself and find her own way. And so she decides it was left the angels should do the same. Anyway. Throg is uh Throg's alright, he's just not not done done fighting. Executioner dies and goes to Valhalla. Angela goes back and, you know, being Angela and, well, yeah. Sadly, writer Colin, writer Colin Bunn, writer of the series, had had plans for years worth of stories with the S Guardians of the Galaxy. But yeah. This is kind of, that's kind of the downside of big events. Sometimes you can basically take your series and Say, oh, by the way, we're killing we're, we're killing off one of your main characters. What? Anyway, that's it for this part of the of the roundup. As always, feel free, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon are super down below. Hit the bell icon to be notified when I put new content. Also, feel free to comment if you want. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off, saying, "Live long and rock hard."